welcome to another edition of Did You Know Doctor Who or what you may may not know about Doctor Who. This time we're going to have a look at the sequel of Curse of Peladon, Monster of Peladon. I hope you enjoy. The mineral was named Trilliscape because Barry Letts saw it listed on the back of a two boots toothpaste as one of the ingredients. This was the final story written by Brian Hales. Working title for the story was Return to Peladon. This is the last on-screen appearance of the Ice Warriors for 39 years. Though they did reappear in various novels, they were meant to have appeared in the cancelled 6th Doctor story and a 7th Doctor story, but these never came to be. It wouldn't be until Cold War in 2013 that the Ice Warriors would return. In in an attempt to recapture the feel of the Curse of Peladon, the same director and designer were assigned to this story, and many of the props that still existed, including the Alpha Centuri and Agador costumes, were reused. However, the Ice Warrior costumes were from the 60s, not new ones. To reflect on Alpha Centuri having become Galactic Federation Ambassador to Peladon, the character was given a new, smarter looking cape. The yellow original cape with the frilly collar was replaced by one in a light green with a high collar. Donald G. also appeared as Major Ian Ward in the second Doctor's penultimate story, The Space Pirates. In the original script, this place only slightly late in the reign of that serial's King Peladon. In this version of the story, Orton and Excali were working together to turn Peladon into an independent world, reaping the profit from the demand of Trilliscate. Tralia is one of the King's advisors who had been due to marry him, but rejected him following his affair with Joe Grant, and Sarah and Excali were romantically involved. The Ice Warriors were originally defeated when the Doctor managed to transmit word of their treachery to the Federation, who blockaded and threatened to destroy the Ice Warrior planet. John Purby had been hampered by chronic back problems throughout the production block, and his condition had only become so acute that the stuntman Terry Walsh filled in for him whenever any physicality was required. Unfortunately, this was particularly evident in the fight between the Doctor and Etis at the end of episode 4. While recording the destruction of the Sonic Lance, Ralph Watson, who played Etis, was temporarily blinded when the magnesium flare accidentally ignited his face. This story was inspired by the 1972 UK miners strike. And that is it for today, I hope you enjoyed. Monster Peladon often gets pretty bad rap overall. Um, a lot of people really don't think it's as good as the first one, and I can understand that. The first one was so much better, but at the same time, I don't think this is a bad sequel as a result. Sure, making the Ice Warriors just typical bad guys again was kind of a low bro. And I, I'll be honest, like I prefer them to be a sort of neutral enemy. Like They're not too evil, not too you know, good. You know, they're whatever they need to be you know this particular unit is bad this particular unit is good whatever um but overall like i, I think this is still a decent story i feel I, I mean it's a fun story overall it's great seeing alpha centuri it's great to see uh peladon again it's great to see the doctor go back to these old uh, locations um so it's just never really done all that much um although it did happen in uh series one of the viral era with uh satellite five um and of course, seeing the Ice Warriors again, I love the Ice Warriors, they're some of my favourite monsters in Doctor Who, so of course I'm all for that. Um, is it as good as the original? No. Is it bad? No. It's still a very good story, I still enjoy it. There are a few iffy moments in it, but overall I think it's an incredibly underrated story, and I totally recommend people watch it. Hope you enjoyed this edition of Did You Know Doctor Who, and I'll see you next time.